That fairy tale day, just 20 months ago, when the world tuned in for Harry and Meghan's wedding, now seems like a distant memory. Today, the media focused on the Queen's Sandringham estate as she summoned Princes Charles, William and Harry to discuss the couple's now uncertain future as royals. Following the meeting, she issued a statement calling the talks very constructive, saying the royal family is entirely supportive of Harry and Meghan's desire to create a new life as a young family, though they would have preferred them to remain full-time working members. The Queen is so determined to try and find some kind of compromise that keeps Harry within the fold, because if Harry was to turn us back on royal duties entirely, I think that would be devastating for the Queen, for the family. But there are crucial details to work out. What will their role be? Can they keep their Royal Highness's title? And how will they support themselves financially? There are going to be so many lucrative offers for them going forwards. The most toxic thing for the Royal Family is being seen to cash in on your Royal status. It's been five days since the Duke and Duchess of Sussex made the announcement and the story continues to dominate the headlines. Princes Harry and William are raising concerns about how the media is covering it. A media report today suggested William bullied the couple out of the family. The brothers deny it and in a rare joint statement called the report offensive and potentially harmful. I absolutely hate the fact that this is being called Megxit. This UK journalist says Meghan seems to be taking the fall and she isn't surprised. Meghan has been vilified in, by the press for months and months and months now. There's been coverage against her that's been, you know, sexist, racist, all sorts of things. And I just don't find it shocking that her and Harry have finally decided this is it. From the decision to leave to how the couple went about it, people are looking for someone to blame as the couple's decision to seek privacy has only pushed them further into the spotlight. Okay, so Renee, let's talk a bit more about the Queen's message today. It had a distinctly different tone from when the news first broke. That's right, Andrew. Last week, the palace a statement was very short, two sentences saying it was a complicated issue that would take some time to work through. Today, from an institution known for its formality, a much, a much more personal tone from the Queen. She calls the Duke her grandson and refers to the couple by their first name, not their title. This was a statement about family. In fact, she used the word eight times at a time when she's really trying to keep her family together and preserve their place in history. Andrew? Okay, the CBC's Renee Filipponi at Buckingham Palace tonight.